Hey, TMFG community, Carlo Cancino here with John Iaconetti. And in today's Ask TMFG episode, John will be discussing what actually happened with Silicon Valley Bank. As a reminder, if you do like our videos, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel, provide us with some feedback, give us a comment, or just give us a like. In today's video, John will be discussing what actually happened with Silicon Valley Bank. John? Perfect. Thank you, Carlo. So just like you mentioned, uh, we've been getting a lot of questions from our clients this past week about Silicon Valley Bank and how it would impact them. Before we kind of hop into it, I think it'd be important to understand who Sil Silicon Valley Bank is. And they largely bank startups and venture companies uh, within the U.S. Um, and they were never really you know, a big player within the banking industry themselves. Um, Silicon Valley Bank would I guess take deposits from uh, those venture capitalist companies and put them into things like treasuries or bonds uh, that did provide a yield. Uh, last year, with bond oh, sorry interest rates going up, uh, bond prices and values went down, and you may have realized that as well within your own portfolios. But Silicon Valley Bank had much more uh, in terms of bond holdings there, like your bonds. Nothing will go wrong if you just keep the bonds in, uh, in invested um, in those capital losses are just paper losses and that will be recovered over time. But that's where we ran into some issues with Silicon Valley Bank. Venture capitalist activity really slowed down last year and they were not getting as much financing as they once were due to those higher interest rates. Um, and therefore they needed to draw on their deposits much faster. And this was affecting the liquidity that uh, Silicon Valley Bank had, and therefore they needed to sell those bonds and realize some of those losses in their overall portfolio. And that caused some stir or some uncomfortability for some of these investors. The banking system is highly dependent on consumer confidence. And all bank deposits in the U.S., similar to in Canada with the CDIC, have some form of government backing just in case any sort of insolvency were to happen. As soon as word got out that Silicon Valley Bank was having to liquidate some of their holdings and to, to cover up the liquidity, if they had the option of keeping their money in Silicon Valley Bank or putting in a bigger name bank, most investors would choose that bigger name bank. And that's what began to happen with Silicon Valley. A lot of their investors started to withdraw their money, only causing more and more issues for Silicon Valley Bank. With investors taking money out of Silicon Valley Bank, that really did affect their liquidity. And that is essentially what banking is all about, is having that liquidity to be able to provide financing to some of these venture capitalists. Now, there's often the question where, is this going to become a effect on other U.S. major banks? And Silicon Valley Bank's client base and operations really differ from other U.S. banks because they're much more smaller and, and localized and focusing on venture capitalists and startups, which naturally already is a bit more of a high-risk venture to begin with. 90% uh, of the deposit counts within Silicon Valley Bank were above that FDIC cap, which similar to the CDIC is the protection that the government uh, puts on deposits. So therefore, 90% of the assets that they have were a bit more on the high-risk side because it's uh, much higher than what the government will back. All of these factors lead us to believe that it makes these banks' problems a bit more localized and less likely to infiltrate into other major U.S. banks or in Canada for that matter. On a more macro level, the stress on the banking system obviously is not good for overall risk sentiment as well, um, even if it's just solely been for Silicon Valley Bank most recently. Um, so that's why we've seen stock markets take effect, and there has been a lot more volatility, because as soon as we start to hear news of a banking uh, issue, that plays a role on consumer sentiment. On another note, it'll appear that the Fed's decision to potentially raise interest rates in the future, um, this could potentially reduce the likelihood that they'll aggressively raise interest rates going forward. Um, but that's why trying to predict the markets are incredibly difficult. There's a lot of intertwining decisions that do play a role. And I mean, that really goes back to our main focus of not trying to predict what's going to happen next in the markets. We're very aware that interest rate hikes were going to cause some level of attrition. We're beginning to see that now with Silicon Valley Bank being an example of it. This is what makes timing the markets very difficult. It's very uh, uncertain times and there's a lot of intertwining dynamics that do play a role, which is why we try to take guessing out of the markets entirely and focusing on what we can control, which is a diversified portfolio approach. John. Thanks for that explanation, really appreciate it. And you took the words right out of my mouth. Diversification. When I think about this situation, 
Silicon Valley Bank was very localized. Like you said, their main uh, consumers or customers or depositors were from the tech sector or uh, startup companies. When we think about diversification, big banks like the big six in Canada, it's more of a diversified, uh, diversified uh, customer base, not necessarily to one sector. And then to your point, having a diversified portfolio, all of these issues and the, the short-term volatility that we saw was because of one company. But when, if you only have investments in one sector or one company, you're going to see that, that, that large volatility. Whereas if you diversify your portfolio, mitigate risk or, or um, spread the risk around with a, with a portfolio that has many different companies, mm -hmm. you're going to reduce that level of volatility in that, in that short term. So really appreciate that explanation. I know that it's, a, it's something on a, a lot of people's minds uh, and glad that we could help out. If you do have questions uh, and want to reach out, absolutely please do so. We'd love to have a conversation in person. Otherwise, that's another episode of Ask TMFG. Um, like I said before, if you do like the content, we'd love to have another subscriber to our channel. Uh, like to have the feedback, please let us know if you are enjoying the videos. Otherwise, just give us a like. Until next time, I'm Carlo Cancino. I'm John Yoconetti. And this has been Ask TMFG.